Yo, what's going on guys? You're watching CSS Positioning Lesson 2 and in this video I just want to have a quick review of the box model. <laughs> Alright then gang, so the box model in diagram form looks something like this. Okay, we have our element in the middle right there, then we have some height and width properties applied to it. Then we've got the padding property which is the internal spacing of the element. Then after that we have a border. And then beyond the border, we have the margin, which is the external spacing of the element. Now, all of these properties together are what are known as the box model. And we can apply these properties to different elements in our CSS, but we can only apply them to block level elements. And by that, I mean they have a display type of block, not in line. OK, so let's take a quick look at some examples. All right then class, as you can see, I've got this index.html file right open in brackets. It's just a dead simple file with all the basic tags like that. And we've got this link tag right here, which is linking to this style.css, which is this one right here. This is a blank CSS sheet. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is go to view and go to horizontal split. And I'm going to move this style one to the bottom. So now we've got the HTML at the top and the CSS at the bottom. All right. Then what I want to do is press this little lightning icon and it's going to bring up the live preview right here. So as we make changes over here, it's going to automatically update on the right over here. So let's just minimize this a little bit to see them both and then scoot this in right over here. All right. So the first thing I want to do is create a few different tags. I'm going to say P for a paragraph tag and just say test. Then I'm going to copy and paste this like that and then I'm going to do a couple of a tags we don't need to have a href value at the minute uh, we'll call that test as well and we'll copy and paste that too so if now we look over here you can see that the P tags right there are one after the other stacked on top of each other whereas these two a tags are next to each other right that's because these are inline elements and these are block level elements. So these have a display type of block automatically and these have a display type of inline. OK, now, like I said, we can only apply all of those different box model properties to block level elements. These things right here. And if we do it to these ones, then it's not going to work because they're inline elements. All right. And block level elements by default take up 100 percent width of the page. Right. So currently the page is this big and they take up all that width. If the page was this big, they take up all that width there. Right. And I can demonstrate that by inspecting the element. I'm just going to go to right click and inspect. Then I'm going to zoom to full screen. If I hover over this P, you can see up at the top, it goes full width. Right. That little orange and blue box that shows you that the P element is full width and it's taking up the whole space of the page. And this one is too. But if we go to the A tags, now you can see just those small blue squares to show you how wide they are. And that is not the full width. They're just taking up the room of the element itself. OK, that's what inline elements do. Now, then, if I get that back there and press this link again, this link was disconnected because we inspected the element, by the way. What I'm going to do now is just add some um, box model properties to these P tags. Right. So I'll say P and I'll say width. 50% instead of 100%, we'll give it a margin of 20 pixels, a padding of 30 pixels, and, a th and we'll give it a border as well of two pixels solid and black. All right. So now if we refresh over here, we can see all of those box model properties applied to these P tags. All right. Now, if I try and do the same thing to the A tags and all we're going to do is say comma A. So then we're applying it to both of these tags and save. You can see that it's not worked the same. OK, first of all, it's not got that width attribute associated with it. All right. Secondly, the margin isn't there. It's not present except this margin. The top and bottom margin isn't there, but the left and right one is. So that's not worked properly. The padding. Fair enough. This has worked. But because this is not a block level element. It's kind of overlapping into this top one. OK. And the border has that worked? Let me see. Yeah, the borders worked. So we can apply the border to it. Now, if I change the display type of the A tags to block, display block and save it. Now this works exactly the same way. OK, so that is how we control the width, height, 
padding, margin, and border properties of elements. And that's how we change them from inline to block if we want to. We can also change them to inline block, which kind of combines the best of both worlds. So we can have that inline ability of stacking left and right, but we can also apply these other box model properties to it. If I reduce this to 20%, you'll see them stacking now left to right. And that's the inline kind of property coming through. So if I delete that now, and just display them as block. Now they don't do that. All right. So there we go, guys. That is a quick review of the box model. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to drop a comment down below. Otherwise, guys, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and I'll see you in the very next video.